Yeah. I can barely hold them with one hand. Oh my gosh, guys, you will not believe what just almost happened. I almost cut my ruler in half. So I've gone ahead and popped all of the packing slips onto this little clipboard. And their highlighters ended up being dried up, so that obviously wasn't a very good customer experience. Hi there, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me for another video. So today is Monday the 30th of May and I thought I would film a day in the life for you guys. It's kind of a busy week as I'm a little bit behind in preparing the sub box. So that's something I'm going to have to work on today. But I'm going to have a little bit of trouble though as the weather's been really, really bad lately. It's currently winter or at least heading into winter in Australia right now. But the weather's been really inconsistent. So I'm the type of person who will get really badly affected by severe weather changes. So I'm currently dealing with a really bad headache right now. And I was actually thinking about taking the day off and just lying in bed. But the thing is, I've been in bed all weekend, so I didn't want to stay in bed any longer. And I wanted to do something productive. So I had planned to film today for a while as well. And I almost considered, you know, to not film today. Just so I could try to get through the day um, without having to worry about having the camera set up at the right angle and filming. It's a lot more efficient if I just work on the task without worrying, have to worrying about having to film it but i thought i'd be real with you guys instead and show you what a day is like so i do apologize if i'm feeling a little bit off today um and it comes across on the camera you can probably tell but i'll try my best to pull through and get some footage for you guys today so i have a post-it note of things that i need to do today because i didn't feel like writing in my planner so today we have to print and cut the vellum dashboards for the sub box we also have to pack some orders that came through during the weekend. While I'm printing off the vellum dashboards for the sub box, I'm also going to run a print job for the 2023 inserts, at least the ones that I've designed so far to maximize productivity. So I've actually got two printers at the moment, which means that I can run them both at the same time. Um, actually, no, maybe I'll run the dashboards at the same time on both printers so i can do two sizes at once and maybe that'll be a little bit more productive yeah i reckon that's it for today so let's get started with the day shall we what i'm gonna do today is to print off the orders from the weekend and pack them so i can get them to you as fast as possible but I thought I'd clear out the printer first because I did do a large print run over the weekend for the 2023 inserts so that I don't have to wait around the office while they're printing. So here's the massive stack of inserts. I can barely hold them with one hand. This one's our weekly inserts in the A5 size. And this is what the cover's going to look like for 2023. So this is the cover for the um, this particular style of inserts. And we also have a monthly cover page for every month of the year where you can write your focus for the month your master to do's for that month and any important dates that you might have and then we head into the first week of january which happens to start on a sunday so most of it's actually december and then the right hand side is of course a grid page which is i think i set it as four millimeters and they have really faint lines so it's not too distracting when you write i find that when you have really dark grid line sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming and your writing gets lost in between the lines so i made sure to keep the grid lines as light as possible and then it just continues on so i'm going to have to punch these but not today i thought you guys would be interested in seeing what the 2023 inserts look like so far especially the ones that i've designed I'll show you the pen that I've been using to sign off packing slips lately. It's the Zebra Sarasa 0.5 
vintage gel pen in the color green black and I don't know why because I feel really gravitated towards using this pen when signing off packing slips lately. Green is a very different color for me. Usually I go for browns or blacks when I'm writing, but I like having that little pop of color on the packing slips as it stands out a bit more. So if you have placed an order, you'll probably notice that the writing's in green. I was thinking though, maybe it'll be kind of fun to switch up every single week. Maybe I'll use a different color every single time, but I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and start signing the packing slips and then we'll start packing orders. Okay, so I've got the packing slips all signed and now we are going to head to the very dark inventory room. So I do apologize for the poor lighting in here. This room doesn't have a very good lighting system, so it ends up being really dark. And on top of that, it's actually really gloomy outside right now. So we're not going to have a lot of light in this room, but I hope that's okay with you guys. So I've gone ahead and popped all of the packing slips onto this little clipboard so I can easily tick off all the items that have been picked. And usually my brother's the one who actually picks all the orders but it's been a little bit slower lately in terms of orders so I've been more than happy to just pick and pack all the orders myself um, and usually he uses the B Len pen so if you guys notice that the thank you note is in a different ink to the actual ticks on the packing slip it's probably because my brothers picked the order but today because I do prefer gel pen over a ballpoint pen. I'm just going to go ahead and use the same pen that I used for the thank you note on the packing slip. So here we have a packing slip for a lovely customer of mine. I've gone ahead and hit the shipping information. What I normally do first is grab a tray so I can put the items in when I'm picking the order. Um, we've got two sizes here. So we've got the smaller size for smaller orders and also larger trays for whenever there's a larger order or if we happen to run out of the smaller trays. So this person's ordered a couple of things, so let's go ahead and pack their order. And I think I'm going to struggle with this because it's already hard enough without having to film. Um, so filming this process might be a little bit hard. Maybe I'll grab the tripod to make it a little bit easier. <laughs> I've gone ahead and picked all her items. The only thing missing is the A5 2021 year on one page. And the reason for that is because I don't like to keep too much stock of dated inserts because it's already halfway through the year. So I don't want to end up with a whole bunch of dated inserts just because it's kind of a waste to chuck them out if they don't get sold. But we've got everything in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick all of the rest of the orders and then after that see what's missing make the missing items and then pack the orders so it's time to pack them but we are missing a couple of custom orders as well as items that aren't in stock at the moment so i'm gonna go ahead and print those out cut them out make them and then we'll get into the order packing so i thought i'll take you on a little tour of my packing station while we're here so usually my friend shanna comes in and packs the orders but today i'm gonna be packing them myself so i thought it would be nice to show you guys what the packing station looks like while we're here so usually we put the orders here i have here some stickers for easy access uh, while we're packing orders so i just made these on my dymo but they're just stickers that say freely to indicate whether an item's free or not some please do not bend stickers as well as some glitch stickers we've got here all these small cello bags oops 
small cello bags that we need. We also have here the backing cards for the tab divider labels because they're a bit flimsy and I don't want them to get bent during transit. We have the freebies for Etsy orders, um, freebies for Shopify orders. Over here we have all my writing utensils and also other utensils. Um, I like to use the Posca marker for writing the names on the boxes because my boxes are black regular permanent markers don't show and previously i was using post-it notes to write all the names on the boxes to differentiate them before sticking the actual shipping labels on i felt like that was generating way too much waste so i figured i would use posca markers instead we also have some cello bags for the pens I didn't used to use cello bags when packing packaging pens, but there were a couple of customers that said that their caps on especially the mild liners came off during transit and their highlighters ended up being dried up. So that obviously wasn't a very good customer experience. And here we have the um, water activated paper tape. So these are actually really cool because they're reinforced. So if your package accidentally gets slit during transit, um, it won't actually go through because there are these fibers that run across the entire tape, which makes it really, really strong for transit. And these are made out of paper. So we've moved towards these for packaging orders. Got them pre-cut in the sizes that we commonly use to package our orders. I've also got here my two demos. So I've got the larger one for printing off four by six shipping labels and a smaller one for making little stickers as well as some leftover packaging tape that we haven't cut to size yet and then of course we have my computer for inputting all of the shipping weights and printing off the labels as well as the shipping scale which is really important to have when you're sending stuff online because lately australia post has implemented a new system where they are going to send you an invoice for any under declared parcels and i feel like it's not very accurate because normally when i measure and weigh my parcels i overestimate how big they are so i'll add in an extra centimeter just as extra compensation in case anything happens like there's something sticking out or something the other day i logged into my post and i got an invoice for an undeclared parcel and it was an extra five dollars and guess what it was because i underdeclared my parcel by half a centimeter which is ridiculous because i o always over declare and i've also heard instances in several facebook groups where people have gotten charged like for five kilos or something ridiculous like that for something small as a pair of earrings and then if people do dispute their invoices it's up to the sender to prove that the size that they input was actually the correct size which is kind of ridiculous because at that point in time the parcel has already left the seller's hand so obviously australia post is the one who's disputing the size that they should be providing proof that the parcel was actually undeclared because unless the seller takes a photo of every single parcel that they send with dimensions for all three sizes every single time it's going to be really hard to prove your parcel and how much it weighs especially if you're sending multiple items in every single order because when you have lots of different items in your order the weight and size of the boxes will fluctuate so i've got like seven different box sizes and if you're shipping out hundreds of parcels every single week like i know some shop owners are it's going to get really tedious having to measure every single parcel and document that with photo evidence i don't know i just feel like it's very is adding extra work to shop owners who already have a whole bunch of other things they need to worry about. Anyway, that's my little rant with Australia Post. I still do use them because I feel like they're the most reliable service in Australia so far. And I don't know any other services that kind of compare. I've heard of Sendu and Couriers Please and Aramex, but I've looked at all the reviews online and they haven't been very good. So I'm really reluctant to use them, especially since Australia Post also do rural delivery, whereas I know that Sendu doesn't. So yeah. So we have here tissue paper. So this is pre-cut from a large ream. We also have my barcode scanner for tracking numbers some smaller tissue paper pre-cut and finally we have 
my stickers that I use for packaging the orders. So this is to use to seal up the packages and this one's used to seal up custom uh, dashboards that I pack afterwards or any orders with pens in them. get started in prepping for the subscription books I kind of wanted to do a mini Asian snack haul so we have here strawberry I don't know what they're called exactly they're called strawberry candies um, these are really really good I also got these gummy peach candies and in the lychee flavor as well and strawberry so you'll see here that a recurring theme is that I like peach and strawberry flavored stuff I got some mochi, which is in the peach flavor. And also some, I think these are chocolate on the inside. These are strawberry mochi. Yeah, the only ones I've tried so far are this one and I think this one, but in a different flavor. I think I've tried these when I was younger, but I haven't seen them in so long. So when I saw them on the shelf, I thought I would grab some. But yeah, here's my little Asian snack haul. Okay, so update on the candy, it was a little bit too hard and I think it's because the weather's so cold so the candy kind of hardened up but it was really tasty apart from the initial hardness so would 100% recommend. I have all my printed inserts that I just recently took out of the printer. We've also got more over there that need to be punched. Here's the A5 version of the dashboards that I'm going to be printing off first. I'm also sitting on a swivel chair so I can just push myself around and not have to get up to fill up the printer which is right next to me here. What I've got here is some A5 vellum which we'll be printing onto today. Since it's a thicker paper we're going to put it in the side tray so that it goes through the printer easier. So now it's time to print the dashboards, yay! So I just did a test print to make sure that everything was okay before I went ahead and did the bulk print and it looks like it turned out really good so I'm happy to go ahead and start printing the rest of them. So here are all of the A5 dashboards that have been printed off. I'm going to go ahead and print off the other sizes now and then um, bulk cut them together. So as you can probably hear, it's currently super loud in the printing room right now because we've got both of the printers running. So I'm going to go and move into a different room to work in for the meantime. Okay, so I'm just waiting for everything to print out because it's a little bit noisy in there and I didn't bring my noise cancelling headphones with me. So I'm at the packing area now and we have a couple of things that need to be put away. So these were printed and packed last week but I didn't have time to put them away. So these are the 2023 daily inserts that have been prepped. So I've already mentioned on Instagram but just in case you don't follow me on Instagram, the financial year dated 2021 July to 2023 June inserts have now been released for the daily inserts so far. Um, I've And because it's almost halfway through the year, I've gone ahead and discontinued January to June of 2023 just because um, we're already a couple of days away from June and by the time it gets to you, especially if you're overseas, you might find that most of June has already gone by so you won't be able to use the inserts which might be a waste. So all of our dated inserts from now on, except for I think the quarterly inserts, the month on one page as well as the 
year one page inserts are only dated for July to December so there's been a huge price reduction as well to reflect that change. Okay so all of the dashboards have now been printed and I'm ready to cut them and normally what I'll do if it's a custom order is cut them with a um, handheld guillotine but because we've got such a large stack of dashboards I'm going to use my electric guillotine cutter instead. So this machine is actually pretty cool because it's got a laser so you know exactly where you're going to cut and it also has a back gauge that you can see there which moves back and forwards so that your paper is aligned and to the exact measurements. I feel like it's made my productivity and efficiency improve by so much because rather than cutting a few pages at a time I can do a large stack in one go but because vellum is pretty pricey I think I'm going to go ahead and split them into smaller stacks to cut just in case I make a mistake and I just want to preface this by saying that I am by no means a professional printer I am 100% self-taught so everything that I do or have now. I've learned how to use by myself. So if my methods are not the most efficient or accurate or um, who knows, it's 100% because I'm self-taught. And by the way, I forgot to mention, this is a paper pusher. I don't know the exact name for it, but it basically pushes your paper so the stack is completely straight when you cut it. What I don't like about vellum is the bottom page doesn't usually cut very well so I end up wasting it but that's okay we're going to go ahead and fold that and then move on to the next cut. dashboards as you can see there's a huge amount of them right here um, so I guess the next thing I need to do is to punch these to the corresponding size because they're a little bit more delicate than the milk vellums that I've been releasing in the past description boxes I'm going to also add in a backing card just a cardstock um, maybe the picture on the back as well I think that'll look really cool so here's the backing card that I've just designed for the vellum dashboard. So the next thing to do is to put in the cardstock into the printer and then get printing. Oh my gosh, guys, you will not believe what just almost happened. I almost cut my ruler in half with this electric guillotine machine. So normally when I have a5 inserts that I need to print, or in this case, the A5 backing card, what I normally do is pre-cut the cardstock into a5 size since it makes my life easier i don't have to go ahead and cut them afterwards i can just insert the paper the pre-cut paper directly into the printer and then print directly onto that piece of paper so it reduces a lot of the cutting that i have to do um, which saves me a lot of time so when i was cutting the a4 cardstock in the guillotine i had accidentally left my ruler on the side there and I had the safety gauge completely closed and started cutting it 
when I realized, like literally when the blade was right down there that the ruler was still in there. So to activate this machine, what you have to do is hold onto both of these levers here and push them down. And if you don't have both your hands on the bars at the same time, the knife won't activate and cut through the material and it'll just um, go back up as a safety mechanism, of course, in case something happens. So what happened was I pushed down on the two buttons and activated the blade and it was literally like two millimeters off the top of the ruler before I realized and I got so scared that I took my hands off the bars as a reflex and luckily the blade went up in time and didn't actually cut through the ruler. I've never had to take my hands off the bars all of a sudden. It's usually uh, because like I'm done with the cut and I want to release the blade. So that was kind of scary. But my beloved ruler looks to be safe and sound. My dear ruler, I hope you're not traumatized from this <laughs> event. Here's what the backing board looks like. And this is what the dashboard is going to look like on the other side. So I think that looks pretty cool and professional. The only thing I have to do now is to punch all of them and pack them. Here's what the final product looks like and I'm super happy with how it turned out. This is one of the sneak peeks that's going to be in the next subscription box. That's all for today. I'm going to save the punching and packing for Wednesday because I'm feeling a little bit off right now. The weather has suddenly changed to a nice bright sunny weather which is insane again because it's done that like five times in the past couple of hours. So I think it's time to head home, get some rest. But thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I really enjoyed having your company while I was working. If you've enjoyed this video I would love it if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to this channel and I hope to see you next time. Bye!